This is the Self Preservation Society. This is the Self Preservation Society. This is the South. Italian job, wasn't it? Oh, that was it, yeah. Italian job. Yeah. Okay, are you ready, Kat? I'm ready. Uh, ben, are you ready? Ben, you ready? Um, uh, sorry? Jamie, are you ready? You ready? Um, Mark, are you ready? I will be. Okay, let's roll the titles. Going shot and just, and we ended up, you know, ended up having the biggest debut album in, the, in Sony's history. Um, and then Bros will get back together. Yeah, I mean, listen. You've got a UK wide tour. It'll be a sellout everywhere. Matt and Luke. It'll be amazing. Thing, I'll not lie, I find you very attractive right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It's like talent just makes the horn. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome along to You and Cat's Uncut Podcast with our very special guest today. I mean, he's a friend and he's a legend. It's the one and only Matt Goss, everybody. Yes! Hello, because, uh, Matt's hello. in the house. Matt's yes. in the house so. and you've also got a guitar player with you, but you currently have the guitar in your hand. Uh, hello to Mark, who's there in the hello. corner. Uh, we are going to be playing some tunes today. We're going to have a wee bit of fun. We're going to talk about your life. We're going to be talking about your tour. Uh, there's so much to get through, but now that you're here and you've got the guitar in your hand, let's start the show then um, with, a, with a wee song then, Matt. Uh, this is This is a song called Just For A Change and it's uh, my, probably my favourite lyric because it's everything I've wanted in my life right and, it, and I wrote it a while ago and I uh-huh. still want all of these things so. okay I need a drink I want it to be brown easy to hold when I'm weak sleeping in the clouds not a good place to be I need my feet on the ground and a pocket full of green I want to feel the sand and taste the sea I want to wake up late and sleep for a week I want to arrive the early side of later And I want to live on the right side of the equator I want to walk where it says keep up the grass I want to buy those records I've loved from the past I want to kiss one hundred places I want to make love be warm, rich and naked I don't want to pay any more bills I want to know the surname of the girl that I feel Just for a change, yeah just for a change Just for a change yeah. And I need some rose in my cheeks I need to cry all night from laughing I want to bend the lies that I've believed in I want to be the cat amongst the pigeons By a stranger I want to be seduced And I never only want to wear this suit I never want biscuits unless I got tea And I want to live like a butterfly Work like a bee and be heard Not have to shout And I've really, really got to work out well Just for a change Just for a change Just for a change
got it in there. Oh, God. Amazing. That was amazing. Amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Oh, gave me you. goosebumps. Yeah, very good. Uh, we're going to be hearing a bit more from Matt a little later in the podcast. It's del- I'm just delighted you're here um, in the middle of Wash- w- Wishaw. Yeah, I mean, it was the never-ending journey from Glasgow. And, um, <laughs> I was following your green and white car. <laughs> No, I don't, yeah. don't. You can't tell people I've got a green and white car because I don't. You've got a green and white no, car. No, no, no. I'm, I'm a Hearts fan, mate. The I don't. Back, I don't. The, back, the back of the car's green. No, it's not. And the rest of it's white. No, it's not. It really isn't. <laughs> uh, Matt, it's great to have you here, and you're obviously going to be on a tour of the UK very, very soon, and we'll get to that soon. But let's talk about you, mm-hmm. Matt Goss, the person, and how you've ended up in Wishaw with us today. Let's go right to the very beginning. Obviously a career highlight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've never been up to somewhere quite as glamorous. I mean, inside, it's actually like the TARDIS. It's like you come in there, it's absolutely state-of-the-art. It's beautiful, but outside, yeah, <sighs> little dodgy, little dodgy. <laughs> well, I mean, you've just come from a, re- a, what, a residency in Las Vegas. Yes, but, but this is nice. This is nice. I mean, we could actually, actually get in a lot of trouble in here, can't we? Oh, you can exactly, like, that's what we hope. Yeah. And you can, you can say what you want, you can do what you want. We've got the we've got some whiskey, we've got, got some, some booze, Bacardi, yeah. we've got some gin, we've got some coffee. Coffee, whatever you want to do, maybe we could lock ourselves in here and get a takeaway. I was on the plane yesterday with with my with my, with my guitarist Mark, and um, he's like, "Do you fancy a gin and tonic?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like five of those little bowls. Five they're little they're bowls. doubles. Yeah, he gets five of the little bowls, and he's like, keeps pouring them. I'm like, "Do you, do you drink a lot, Mark?" He's like, yeah, yeah, "I did, I did, I did, I did during COVID." I'm like, well, "It's not COVID anymore. Mate. We're on a plane with that mask." Long COVID. Long COVID. <laughs> long COVID. And then we're walking through the airport, and I look back, and he's swigging one of the bottles. I'm like, "Got something to tell me, Mark?" <laughs> <laughs> on holiday, aren't they? <laughs> on your holidays. Yeah. Oh. And then we met at the hotel and yeah. you ended up drinking margaritas, which you then um, encouraged me to join you in. And, and, and I'm, you I'm, I'm not even a drinker and I was drinking margaritas with you last night and I was a wee bit worse for wear this morning. And we got, and we bought the people in the bar some, some nicer... When I say we, I bought some people in the bar <laughs> some merch in time. Yeah, so what happened? Were you were you recognised in the bar then? And yes. Yeah, you in was, yeah. 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 <laughs> was he wearing his I'm Ewan Cameron t-shirt again? <laughs> he actually said, I love you and Cameron. Yep, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> right, I want to go right back to the beginning, because I was a huge fan of yours in the late 1980s. But how do you get to that point where you become a sex symbol and everybody wants to be Matt Goss or be with Matt Goss? How does that journey begin for you? Well, I mean, it's a strange, strange one. I don't feel it that way at all. You know, I've never felt that way. I've always felt... Um, you don't feel like you're a sex symbol? Absolutely not. Absolutely do you not look in the mirror and think, yes, I'd do me? If I was a woman. Um, yeah. No, but if um, but I'm not. But no, I don't ever... I don't ever... I've never had that. I've always been... But you know you're a good-looking boy. I, honestly, I think I'm a, a. I like who I am as a person, but aesthetically, I've never been that confident. Not even when you had like thousands and thousands of girls screaming after you when you were in your like. Teens. No, I don't think it is. It's funny. Like, um, it was. Uh, I was being interviewed by uh, Russell Brand, and um, a long time ago, and he goes, he goes, yeah, you know, you've had lots of women outside, and you know, people screaming for you outside a hotel room, and. And he goes, he goes, have you ever found yourself thinking, wondering why you're having a little fiddle by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've been in that situation quite a few times. <laughs> and so the, the dichotomy is, you this, and you're by yourself. You know, so much consequence uh-huh. to ever going down that road. I think that, you know, in my life, I was just, there's always been consequence. And you were very observed. And, you know. What age were you guys when this really started for you then? I mean, seventeen when so I had, he, yeah. when we had our smash, uh, smash hits cover. Um, so how a, did smash hits cover come about? It then? was the back cover, actually. It was it back was, cover. Okay. It was um, it was the back cover, and we. I remember I was walking back home in Commercial Way, South East London, in Peckham, and there was this lady, and she she was actually having a hard time outside my mum's <coughs> house, and she was. That was Mark. Sorry, he's, he's old. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but um, Mark, the guitarist, <laughs> and. Um, so she was she couldn't breathe and I said you okay one second so I ran inside and I got said mum we need some water with this lady in a bad way and we we came out and she wasn't there anyway so at least relieved that she maybe sorted herself out and about 15 20 minutes later there were 10 girls outside hyperventilating and my mum looked at me and she said I think it might be because of you son and that was one of those moments when it did not compute to me on any level why people would but be that's why she was so panicky and yeah yeah <sighs> It did not did not compute to me. And then, and then you know, you, you go to places like Australia or Japan or Malaysia or 
you know, Germany. Yeah. And um, don't worry, mate, we're just in a podcast, mate, don't worry. It's all right. Sorry, mate. And, he's, um, he's gone for a cough, but he's a wee to carry out shop. I think it might be a small hair in his throat. He got caught in there from last night. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. He did say the real me. But, um, <laughs> those, those curly ones get a bit lodged. <laughs> I love that this is how we're starting. I can't wait to see where this is going. <laughs> so, but how do you get that opportunity? How do you burst onto the scene? You know, I, we were in a band, and that's what I think one of the things that is a bit frustrating because I'm a multi instrumentalist. We was in a band with my brother, and we were discovered as a band. We weren't put together. We didn't. There wasn't. It wasn't a bunch of choreography where we were, we were a band. And um, in fact, Sounds voted as the best, one of the best um, bands of the South. And um, so we were discovered. And then Sony then signed us. Um, Tom Watkins, who managed the Pet Shop Boys. Um, so did, did Sony sign you as Bross? Yes. Right. So you, were you known as Bross at that time when, yeah, but, when you were found? But my now manager, uh, Chris Herbert, his father, Bob Herbert, was my first manager. So Bob managed us when we were called Summer House. Before Bross, we were called Summer House because they were richer than us and they had a summer house and a pool. And um, we would rehearse in their summer house. And then graciously, Bob, um, who now has p- passed away, but a wonderful man, he then, yeah, he then passed us on to Tom. And then Tom got signed by, you know, um, Muff Winwood, Gordon Chan, just, and we ended up, you know, ended up having the biggest debut album in, their, in Sony's history. That's something else. <laughs> like, wow. That is huge. Yeah, that that is massive. Sent about nine million albums, that first album. Wow. So, yeah. So when you get signed up by Sony and you release that album and you're on top of the pops, do you think we've made it? You know what? You do. The first top of the pops is something that was really special because you grew up there. It was a TV religion. You know, it was yeah. it was something that you didn't think would ever go away. And I think it still should be here because there's there's not a show where you can go on and and actually you know, be in, in one place yeah. where, and they recorded it as live. So you would see all those people on stage that you would really admire and you couldn't believe it. But the, the time I thought I really made it was when a couple of times, but when I was watching only fools and horses and we were, we were, we were put in as part of the story. And um, it's moments like that when you were in like pop culture. You're actually yes. part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the society. And that's the, incredible. The, the, the old boy was you know, a bit going on a cruise and pretend he was, you know, with a, with a brosette. And so that, those moments, or seeing a Christmas dinner with your mum and and you pull a Christmas cracker and the question was, who, what are the names of the twins in Bross? Like, you know, <laughs> so it was like those little things make you yeah. feel like you're part of the tapestry of something. You know. Can you remember who was on that top of the pops with you? Does that stick with you? The first uh, person I, the first artist that I actually performed with um, on a TV show was Sinead O'Connor and In Excess. So it's like a good lineup. Bad. Yeah, it's a that's decent lineup. Really not bad, isn't it? No, it's pretty incredible when that was our first kind of big and In Excess with there and Sinead O'Connor with there. It was just it was incredible. Like and, you know, you have to kind of be like, yeah, I'm cool, you know, but you know, you, you you're absolutely shaking your boots at that point because you just you know you're learning as you go and then you suddenly become that band that you know you we were the biggest pop band in the world but how, how does how does one cope with that at such a young age or did you not um I, you know i think that my upbringing my grandfather was the most influential man in my life i guess and just you know very humble man he was a gunner in the second world war and my nana passed away when she was only 50 and then he was a builder. And then after that, as a, as a foreman and a builder, he became a faith healer. And he became a, you know, and back then there was no such thing as healing, yeah. healers. And it's certainly in that kind of culture, in our culture. And um, and my mother, um, she was very, very strict on humility. You know, so I, I never, I'm above no, I'm above no one, you know, you know. I feel very observed in my life, also spiritually, by my mother and my sister and my grandpa and my nana. Um, the people I've lost, Johnny, my bodyguard, um, uh-huh. also passed. Um, so I've lost a great deal. So I feel constantly observed, but I also love the way being a nice human being feels. I love, you know, I can make or break somebody's day. If somebody comes up to me, I can make or break their day. And it's so much easier to make their day. Do you know what? That's interesting because when we arrived here at the studios... A woman jumped out of a car, ran over to you, and just threw her arms around you, yeah. and you held on to her for as long as she held on to you. Yeah, and that was something you never met before. No, I know, but like then I, I, I'm a blessed. I'm a, I'm in the blessed position there. 
you know, somebody's excited to see me. And, you know, um, the thing that, that not saddens me, but humbles me, like all of us will have to say goodbye to each other at some point in our lives. And we leave this place. And I really, really live my life in the fact that I know that it, it's, it's a, it is a place of privilege. So when somebody is excited to see you and, and you go, well, like you said to me earlier, that the people in the, in the bar last yeah. night, you know, and, you know, that's a story for them. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm part of a lot of stories. And if I'm lucky enough to be a ma- well, the, the maker of memories. Well, then, the girl we met last night was celebrating her 30th birthday. Yeah. She's going to live with that memory for the rest of her life. So what happened? She, she was celebrating her thirtieth birthday, mm. and, and Matt um, bought them a round of uh, margaritas. Mm. And there was a mum, the dad, the boyfriend, and the daughter who was celebrating her thirtieth birthday. And they all got pictures. And you just know that's just made their thirtieth birthday. That that's just made cool. their night, and that will live with them for the rest of their life. And is there not that? a story? Did you not buy an entire pub around once? What was that? Yeah, well, it was just recently. I was in the pub during the England game. I forget what game it was. It was a really boring game. And so I so what, you, you decided to yeah. liven it up a bit. So I, bought, I bought the whole round, 150 <laughs> shots of um, 150 te- tequilas, yeah, and it was really good. But it was like, but it just, it, you know, it did change the energy of the pub. Yes, yeah. and everyone just started, you know, continuing with their own order. I got a couple of rounds sent to me as well. So it just is. I think you just pay it forward, and you can create the environment. You know, yeah. you, I think people in general want to be around kindness and, and, and fun, and, and I'm, I'm much more inappropriate than I, than, than people know, and I'm and I've got a really, really wicked sense of humour, so it's like... Well, we know that because you were on our radio show this morning and obviously there's kids in the car driving to school and things like that, so we do tone it down a bit in the radio show and we sang a song and it ended up being about sausage. Sausage, yeah, but I mean, it (laughs) depends how you look at sausage. Do you know what I mean? How how do you look at sausage, Matt? Um, Probably the way you're looking at sausage right now. You know, I think the way I look at sausage... (laughs) Is, um, well, I think there's, th- there's two there's two kinds. There's chipolatas, uh-huh. yeah. like Mark would know a lot about that, yeah. um, <laughs> and there's you and me that would know about sausage. And obviously, Cat really knows about sausage. Yeah, I'm an know, expert. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your favourite cat? Um, the big bratwurst things. <laughs> the bratwurst. So you like sausage. a big sausage? Oh, I mean, well, it's spicy as well. A currywurst, maybe. Yeah. Are you are you like a curry sausage? Yeah, yeah. 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 Any, I mean, just like. <laughs> At my age, any sausage. Any sausage, <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer sausage in the morning or at night? I, I, I'm open to sausage 24 hours a day. So, so breakfast and dinner then, sausage. I am a sausage girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. See, it's good talking about food, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I love yeah. food. Yeah. We've, we've, I love gone, food. we've gone from you being a superstar <laughs> with Ross, signed up by Sony, to Cat loving a sausage loving in sausage. the morning and in the evening. Breakfast and dinner. I think breakfast and dinner, we're talking in a food sense, aren't we, Cat? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about? I wasn't talking about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know this, and I mean, everybody who knows Matt knows Luke. They know Bros. They know the story. They've watched the documentary that was on the BBC. Uh, my question is this is that did the success of Bros cause a problem between you and Luke? Did that drive a wedge between you two? I don't think that the success of Bros did that. I think that when we were actually on the road and we were touring, um, I think we, I mean, I thought we were really, really happy. I mean, we just, uh, we love touring more than anything. But I think being the front man, um, what I got from the documentary that my brother felt that there was not enough attention paid to him uh, it's more about you because um, you're the Do you mean like man. the whole way through the Bros journey? Yeah, but I think in normal band that would be relevant. I think that's actually got that's he's that would be that would make sense to me. But with Bros, I do think that it, in my in my mind, myself and my brother were always on the couches. We were always in the radio. Yeah. So I think that it, it wasn't as it was equal. Yeah, it was. And but I also have to do a job. You know, it's, it's you know I love I love I know how to get a crowd going. I know how to connect to a crowd, and. I, I said it in the in the movie. I was like, you know, I, I, it felt like a never ending apology, and it, it's it's at that point now that I love my brother with every fibre of me, and and I respect him and admire him. But there was um, a clash. But there's but no. But even now, I think that we we're, we're just really struggling with to find each other's language, and um, I'm at that point in my life where. If I do something, I need to have fun. I need to be in a place of mm-hmm. sl- harmony that's not too, you know, yeah. treacherous on my nervous system. You know, so when did you last speak to Luke? Um, probably over a month ago. Over yeah. a month ago. Over a month ago. Yeah. And, and if he was to watch this, what would you be saying to him right now? 
that I love him. Um, I, I, I want to spend more time being brothers. You know, I, I know that you know he's an incredible artist, and and I respect that. That with, that goes without saying. But I miss just maybe ignoring each other in the pub and just not talking yeah. about music or or what we do or what we're going to do or it just I'm, I really really genuinely miss my brother as, as my brother and also geography plays a big part in that and because he's, he's in the States now you're States. back in the UK mm -hmm. but you just want your brother to be your brother yeah and, you don't want it, to be it as a business you don't want it to be as a working relationship or for music to get in the way you just want to be doing what we're doing here now or what we did last night in the yeah, pub yeah. was just sit around and have a few drinks and have a laugh. Talk yeah. about a rubbish I mean, and just is, get on. He is, mm -hmm. he is my brother. Like, he's the only person that if, if, if I've got an issue, if I'm worried about something physical or, or to do with my life, he, he is that guy. I mean, without question, I think... Is he your first question. phone call? Um, he, he, he is that person. If it's serious, yeah, he mm -hmm. would be my person, my go-to person. And... But I feel like, you know, sometimes I think we all live like we're a li little immortal. Yeah. And we're not. And and I think that, you know, when you feel virile and young and strong, yeah. and which which I do, yeah. I think sometimes we, we, we really, we forget, you know, we, we get that halfway point. You go, oh, we've got another, another, another lifetime. Excellent. Left. Yeah. yeah. And, but but life's, life's too short. It doesn't work out like that. It doesn't that. work that way, no. It and really do you work. see yourself then... Because it does sound like there's still so much love there, yeah. even though it's complicated. Tremendous but love. families are complicated. Yeah. Do you see yourselves getting back together as Bros, you and Luke yeah. and doing and to, stuff? And to relive those amazing moments that you had, because your fans are there. They'd love to see you together again doing a UK tour or something. Yeah, I mean, I just want to crack on with it, really. I mean, I want to... I really want to enjoy what I'm what I'm doing with my tour and the the, the, the the orchestra and the big band because there's something really beautiful about being in in control of what you do mm -hmm. for anybody listening. You know when you when you can actually have the the luxury of of, of of deciding where you go creatively, it's a it's a beautiful thing. But I also love you know being on stage with my brother. We, the last gig we played, we were in Belfast, and it was an outdoor gig, and and there's a certain magic about me and my brother on stage. And so, yeah, I think that really, you know, we'll, we'll probably film it, make a new record. Right, so, so let me ask you this then. So what is the dream for you? So 2023, it's all about your solo tour mm -hmm. across the UK. Which sounds amazing. We will get to that, yeah, by the way. We will get to that. So that's Matt Goss. It's going to yeah. Matt Goss, big band. You've got the Philharmonic Orchestra. Phenomenal. So that's this year. So what about 2024? Do you think that's Ross? Yeah, you I think, Luke. yeah, I mean... Ideally, yes. I think that's yes. how much. I think that's how long it would take to get everything in place. I want. I really, truly want him to feel comfortable, heard, um, you know, and seen. I, I, you know, metaphorically and literally. I need yeah. him to to feel completely part of complete it. as a as an artist. Yeah. But I also don't want to lose my what I bring to that. Yeah, too. totally. And because I don't want to become subservient, I, I, I want to to be an equal too. Because you can but, also. But, but the thing is, though, you created magic, and yeah. you continue to create magic, and it's a shame that that's not continuing. That's what I find quite baffling. So mm. I think it's time for you two to sit down across the table, yeah, sort it out yeah. over a sausage. Possibly. A couple of sausages. A couple yeah. of sausages. He's vegetarian, so... Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I can get you some good vegetarian sausages. I yeah. believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. And then, um, and then Bross will get back together. Yeah, I mean, listen... You've got a UK-wide tour. It'll be a seller everywhere. Matt and Luke. But this It'll be is amazing. The thing, though, we're not, we, we've not broken up. Like, we made a promise on the last... On the OT yeah. gigs that we would always stay, quote-unquote, in the band. So we've not broken up. we just got to get back on stage. And I mean, do it. Yeah. And, and come to an agreement to do it yeah. as well. And see, while we're talking about Bros, can we do a wee Bros number? I was just about to say that. Oh Mark, are you, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. You all right? Is your yeah. 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 Mark, You're get right. on the guitar. Did, yeah. you get that, gone. did you get that little curly hair out your throat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ginger one, yeah. Yeah, the ginger one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. So, um, we're going to do um, a wee Bros number here, if you don't yeah. mind. Can, can I put in a request? Do you know it? Yes. <laughs> It's got to be I owe you nothing yes, Can you? 100% Would you okay. want to do it? I owe you nothing Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do it Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to introduce it? So, like, stare at the camera. And oh, this one. Yeah. So, this is uh, a number one record that I had called a little little tune we had called "I Owe You Nothing." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
Makes me horny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sur- circulation. Hold, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Can we just back up? For- <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. no I'm not having that. <laughs> me too, right? Yeah, obviously. Oh, obviously. obviously. It's, it's, it's Sorry. Talent, talent makes me horny. Well, I think that, by the way, is a brilliant, brilliant t shirt. It is. Horny. Talent I mean, makes I, you I'm horny. I'm related to talent makes you horny. Yeah. I've been working with Kat for 20 years and she's never said that to me. Well, yeah, well, because I didn't say talent. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, what does that tell you? <laughs> um, can, can we, we did something on The Breakfast Show with you where we gave you five random words yeah. and then you wrote a song just like that. Right. And because this is a podcast and we can literally do anything and say anything, okay. Kat... You're now going to, in the next couple of minutes, think of five random words. you got a bit of pen and paper there, Ben. I can thank you, Ben. Chance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh. no, oh. no, you don't. Or, or you can tape it on your phone. <laughs> right, so Cass got five words. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, here's your five words. Okay, you did ask me to... Okay, what are they? Right, so we're starting with sausage, because it's sausage. a favourite. Okay. Um, we're then going with jiggy. Jiggy, okay. Get jiggy. Jiggy, yeah. you, do you know what jiggy is? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. getting jiggy with it. Uh, then horny. Horny. And then custard. Custard. And we're finishing with chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> chlamydia. <laughs> All right. All right. Because if you can make that rhyme with anything, you are actually chlamydia. a genius. That's All my right, daughter's so... name. <laughs> 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 hey, no, I actually christened her, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. You're probably yeah, the father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the future father. <laughs> Right, um, here we go. Let's do the same kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, go on. Then. <coughs> so we go five random words. Mm-hmm. Matt's about to uh, sing a song about them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's just a normal day for me, yeah. And obviously, I'm thinking about sausage, yeah. <laughs> Cause that's all I do yeah. Is think about sausage Oh yeah Sometimes when I get 
Sausage, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots and lots of sausage. <laughs> Cause I'm getting pretty jiggy. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting pretty, pretty and jiggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause when looking at you, one, I'm feeling kind of horny. Yeah. Kind of horny. <laughs> Last night I can't really tell you, but I got some custard on my face. Yeah. <laughs> I got some custard on my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then the, I called the doctor. <laughs> He's a friend of mine, yeah. <laughs> He said, come here, yeah, yeah. He said, come here, yeah. Oh, come here, yeah. Oh, now you is not my friend no more. Oh, he's not my friend no more, yeah. <laughs> the motherfucker. <laughs> the motherfucker. Yeah. Oh yeah. The motherfucker. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> so good. So so good. Not necessarily a song, but that was so good. Very you can't wait to hear that with a big band and an orchestra. <laughs> yeah, not really a song. Thanks for, Thanks for those words. You're welcome. You yeah, told me to up my game, and I think yeah, I did. Yeah. You the did. Sings quite well. It does. It yeah. does actually. It kind of flows. Yeah, yeah, it did. So it flowed about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I gave you chlamydia. Yeah, apparently in that song. In that song, yeah. So I give you my sausage. Well, I should have known them if it was custard. I mean, really. <laughs> it's quite a night, I missed. There's a problem there. There's a problem. There's a problem. Oh, talk, talk, talking of um, sausage and um, love and jiggy and horny, are you in love just now? I am in love, yeah. You're in There's love? A really, really wonderful woman, born in Scotland also. I spoke um, to her last night. Where's she from? She's in Dunfreeth. Dumfries. She's she, she's in Hamilton, I think, and yeah. then she was originally from Dumfries and Galloway. She lives in Hamilton, no, or no, in no, Hamilton no. the musical. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I think because no. Hamilton's only like five minutes yeah, from yeah, here. No, no. Yeah, she's that's where she was. Uh, she she lived, but from what she was from Dumfries. Oh. And um, and where and how did you meet? If you don't mind me asking, online, online, yeah. or was it a strip club? <laughs> no, I think no, no, it was it was online. It was online. Yeah. So, what, did you do the online dating? Yeah. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get Kat to do some online dating because I think she'd have a blast. And, yeah. and, and, and do you know what? There's there are many a, a man out there who would love to go on a date with Kat Harvey, but she needs to make herself available. Yeah, I think you do. I think that's the thing. There's that a, a stigma attached to it. And I think that if you know, where do you? With, we're all terrified of each other. So we're so politically correct, and obviously not on this show. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you know the good thing about online for me was that we got to actually converse. Because of, uh, you know, we weren't in the same, even the same country, but you do kind of, you think geography is going to affect things, but it doesn't. If it's right, it doesn't. Um, so you, you, think, you spoke for a while then before yeah, you met up, yeah. For months. It was months. during COVID, yeah. Right. We got to really, get to, got to know each other. And then, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a really kind of, it's hard, like, going to, you know, a supermarket or a, I just don't know where you shop. meet people anymore. Exactly. That's the thing. Because there's also, not. Also, do people? I think yeah. men. I think men are terrified <clears throat> to really like impose on a, a woman's space. I mean, it's actually we've been battered over the years. I mean, the, the, and and I've I've had enough of it. I really have. And just I I love being a man, and I love the testosterone. I love 
the the energy I have as a man. I feel like it's you know, and I want men to feel good about themselves again. You know, I think that's part of the issue. It's like yeah. we've got to feel good about ourselves again and not feel this whole predatory thing. It, it can't be a blanket statement. It, yeah. it, we're not that. You know, my mother and my grandfather taught me how to be a gentleman. And I think that, I think going back to the, the, the you know, the online dating thing. Oh, oh they're sad. Oh, hello. Oh, they're sad. Going, <laughs> going to the online dating thing, I think that, that breaks down barriers, you know. You're breaking down walls and... Um, it's a little more, it's a safer space for a guy. So if you, it, I would recommend it, like just put yourself I'm there. I'm scared of it. I'll be honest. I I'm scared of it. I yeah. think, but I think in some ways that there's, there are boundaries in place in yeah. that particular way of meeting somebody that you can actually converse first and see if you like them. Cause that's a big thing, you know, like if, you know, when you get a bit older, you just want to have something wait, you wait, like wait, as well. But because um, of who you are and what you've done in your career, was going online not fraught with danger for someone like yourself anyway? Well, I have a proper, really not embarrassing, but embarrassing and a somewhat desperate story. Um, I, I went on a, a dating site and um, I got reported for impersonating Matt Goss. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got reported on a true story and I got reported for uh, impersonating Matt Goss and I got a, an email and not only can in my subscription, but saying that we don't appreciate people impersonating celebrities. And I'm like, and it was like a double whammy of desperateness, me going, no, it is me. <laughs> no, no. So I just, I, I didn't reply. I was like, that's proper desperate, isn't it? It's like, you know, no, no, it is me. Look, look, I can give you my phone number. But, no, so I, I left that site and, and not a different one, but yeah, it worked. It worked. And so I'm, you eventually found the person that you're in love with right now yeah. online and it's working out for you. Hundred percent. She's wonderful. She's very kind, and I got to know her, her more. And like the physicality of it is obviously the easy part in a way, is, but it's the actual getting to like somebody and yeah. knowing somebody what makes them tick, and that and that's what I think that can do. I mean, so how how long were you just speaking before you actually met in a physical 16 sense? Sixteen years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sixteen years. We took our time. No, no. It was about. It was about. <laughs> Four, four or five months. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, four so you, months, you yeah. really know each other before you even meet. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. lovely. Honestly, yeah. that's yeah. lovely. Because that's really nice. I feel that you're like, because I've seen like the documentary and we watch in Strictly and I feel that you're such a gentle, kind of kind spiritual soul and showbiz can be quite full on and yeah. everyone's got a comment on social media and stuff like that. Yeah. You feel like you're just a wee gentle soul. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, I'm um, a lot more... Look, we're, we're nuts, aren't we? We're like we have a, we have such a laugh, and I'm inappropriate. I love being around people where I can be myself, and it's so rare you can actually be yourself. Yeah, I think that I've reached a point in, in the last ten years where every the, the amount of love, and I don't want to call it anything else because it is love. The amount of love that I receive um, is is incredible, and that's what made, has made me feel much more comfortable being here and coming back home. And I just like kind people. Like I have no time for people that. Most people think they're cool and not cool, you know, yeah. and, and I think people that are just kind and up for a laugh, you know, uh, you know, and have, have your back behind your back. That's like the, yeah. probably the, my you, mantra of life. Do you know, do you know, uh, we kind of touched on this last night when we're sat in the bar, but here's what I think is that you were a mega superstar with Bros and then you disappear and you go to Vegas, and you're there for over 10 years, and you're a huge success in Vegas, massive success. You make a lot of money, successful shows, and then when you come back to the UK, people forget who you are or who you were because you've been out of sight, out of mind. So it's like reintroducing yourself to the British public again, and you do that by going on Strictly Come Dancing, and people are just now going, Matt, is that Matt Goss from Bros? Where's he been for the last 10 years? Right. Have, have you found that coming back to the UK has been difficult because you're having to reintroduce who you are and what you I are. Mean, I think that's maybe your perspective and I respect that. But for me, my, my reality is very different. But so, I'm talking about the, the fans know who you are. The fans no, know where you've saying, been. I'm not saying that. Like, I'm not saying that like for me, my life is very conversational like with people that are not necessarily fans and way before strictly like way. I mean, it would be weird for me. That be, it would almost be absurd for me to say that before strictly. I mean, me coming back, um, it, it's been that I just have, I guess 
I'm not changed to the point where I'm not unrecognisable. I'm still no, no, no. But but, but you know what I mean in a no, general I know what you mean, sense. But I feel because like you've not been in the UK for ten, eleven years. To some but, just, I come, but I come back every year. Yeah, and I play gigs. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm trying to say like when I've got whenever I've gone out, like yes, the strictly thing it has definitely broadened it. Like mm-hmm. definitely people that were not Matt Goss fans, and and may, that's more interesting to me. The people that yeah. in some ways that are, but. Um, my life has been very conversational. Like if you, I never remember a day of coming back here ever where I've not done big TV or I've not done the radios and where I've gone out. And, and it's not about saying, Oh, people recognize you. It's, it's, it's paying respect to my journey. Yeah. For me personally, my experience is that that I just have always received tremendous, tremendous amount of love. And it's been very conversational. Like people will come up to me, and talk about anything yeah and I, and that's been a really beautiful thing the strictly thing yes i understand what you're saying but if you look at the movie for example that the movie hadn't come out and we hadn't done the o2 you saw the people at the airport yeah that is not normal and yeah. that has been my normal no 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 for, true totally for but it, yeah. it was, you, you dive in but then you dive back out again and go yeah, back yeah. to vegas and all that that's the point i was making yeah, you, yeah. you weren't here all the time you weren't part of our public consciousness all right. the time and that's what I think this is great what you're doing right now is that you're back Matt Goss is back there's talk of bringing Bross back as yeah. well you're staying in the UK you're doing a UK wide tour you're coming to Edinburgh you're coming to Glasgow which is just fantastic even like the Uncle Sid like I'll see Uncle Sid and we'll have a month when we'll do a promotion and then I'll but then I'll leave yeah and that will be the, I'm definitely noticing being here, like even like you know the, the smaller stuff as well. Like people say, "Would you are you available to this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm available. Yeah, I'd love to do that." Or philanthropic stuff, or anything. I am being back in the UK is you. You're much more available, and you yeah. hear about things totally. Well, it's lovely. I mean, let's be honest. We never thought we'd get you to an industrial estate in Wishaw, yeah, well, and I'm, we have. We have. Yeah, about, and we've yeah. had songs. Chlamydia, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's been a. <laughs> Yeah. You, you, yeah. Missed, you missed that classic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uncle, Uncle Sid, um, Matt's driver, has just walked into the studio. Head is curious. Head is curious. Head is curious. Head is curious. And, right. um, and, and, he's, and he's just heard um, us talking about chlamydia and his face just dropped. I need to... <laughs> it seemed very familiar familiar to you. That <laughs> is that all right? I mentioned by you a few times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to ask you about your Scottish fans because we do get a lot of them that contact our radio show and they are absolutely bonkers. I mean, they... They've been with you from the start. Um, there's a group, isn't there? Who are the group? The- Scottish Gossip Girls. Yeah, That's and they're just, everything you do, they know everything about it. Most people come to Scotland and they say Scotland are like the best crowd in the world. Do you just say that or are we? I think the Glaswegians, I will say like, when you, the shows I've done here, um, it, it's you have a knack of just, the, the one more the one more thing has stayed with me, even no matter where I am. What I always say, people, you go into a bar and people say, oh, one more, one more," and I'm like, it's you, never have, enough. "You have this kind of like this, like the snake from the snake from Jungle Book. Like you just like, okay, I'll have one more." And it's just like, and you, in Glasgow, you should just eat a lot of bread before you come here, just to soak up the alcohol. You always have carbs before a night out. Yeah, because you just have that knack. The Scots yeah. have that knack, and also in Vegas, when I was playing at Caesar's Palace, you would be. Yeah, you. I mean, the Scots would be like, there'd always be a Scottish contingency in my shows, and they were always rowdy, and and to the point where I'd put like, like comedy based around the Scots and stuff like that. We'd have such a laugh, but the Scots were always a big contingency in in, in the Vegas years. Yeah. Oh, so many Scottish fans just Trump in Vegas just to see you. Yeah. I met incredible. so many at the Glasgow Hilton a couple of years ago. They'd all been to Vegas to see you. Yeah, I mean, they follow you everywhere. It's incredible. Like we did, it's basically a Wembley a month. I did for eleven years, so it was it was a lot of people got on. You know, it was a destination point, and that's I do miss that. I do miss having that. Show. How many people went through the doors then in total in Vegas? I, I don't roughly know, a, a couple of hundred, a few hundred thousand, and yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're thinking at least uh, what a week, a couple of a couple of thousand a week. So yeah, uh-huh. eleven years. Yeah, wow, two thousand yeah. a week, eleven years. Decent yeah. gig. Decent gig. A hundred thousand people in Vegas. I mean, why not? So tell us, we're, we're coming to the end, aren't we? Uh, we are, time wise, yeah. I know you've got like a million things to do today. Tell us about this new tour because it sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's the heaviest lift for me ever as an artist. It's the it's the probably the biggest tour I've ever tried to put together. And I say try because you know we're, I'm I'm on the road now because I want people to experience me as an artist, me as a, as a musician, but I also want them to experience what it's like the power of a big band. 15 piece big band 
you know, surrounded by the majesty of the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra. So it's, it's. I just want to create a, a, a glamorous, boozy, fun. The interval. I want people to go out and have a couple of drinks, meet new people, like-minded, kind, cool people. Bring your fabulous. Um, it's impossible, impossible to overdress at my show. You just, it just. I want it to be a proper night out, and we're also talking about after parties. The after parties on each gig as well. So, oh, would you, and how does that work? Do you go to them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I want to be. I just want to create an escapism for people that it, that happens to involve a massive immersive musical experience of everything I've learned before Bros, during Bros, during my solo careers during my Vegas years yeah. and just put it all into one put it onto one stage and I just I, I need and I want people to turn up and um, it's my commitment to music I guess I don't want to go out with you know you know, obviously, I love Mark's company, but not that much. <laughs> you know, and, um, he loves you so much; he's bringing in thirty others. Yes. Yeah. So I want to create. There, there is there is a commitment. There mm. is a commitment, and it is terrifying, if I'm honest, to put that many people on the road. I mean, that's just musicians, thirty plus musicians on the road. And you can imagine the crew that goes around that as well. That's big and, bollocks, and, mate. And the and the bar bill is going to be pretty yeah. nice. But if I don't do this, then I think I will break. You know, if I don't, you try need to and, do this. Yeah, you I, need to do this, yeah, don't you? I do need to do it, and, and I, I feel, you know, you can go to a concert, I think, but this is a real commitment from one artist and and the people around me to actually bring. You put that's everything into it. It's make or break for me. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. Make or break for Matt. Go and see him. He's going to be in Edinburgh. He's going to be in Glasgow. And uh, where did you go for your tickets? Uh, MattGosstour.com. MattGosstour.com. Edinburgh and Glasgow. We'll be there. He had me at booze. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, such, and sausage, yeah. Booze, I'm sausage. Dead. I'm going both nights. Yeah. <laughs> but, but not chlamydia. No, thank you. Can, no, I also no. say, can I also say to you, to both of you, you've, you've <laughs> always given me a sense, you don't. You probably don't realise it, but as an artist, you know, there are certain people that actually make you feel like you want to continue. And you guys are definitely always supportive. And when I'm in America and I've called you, mm -hmm. um, it's a slice of home that actually really, you are part of that big decision to come home. So I'm really, really, really grateful. Thanks so much for listening to the show and watching it on YouTube. If you want tickets to go and see Matt Goss in either Edinburgh or Glasgow, go to his website, mattgosstour.com. That's mattgosstour.com. Kat and I will be there. We hope to see you in either Edinburgh or Glasgow with the one and only Matt Goss. And to end the show, here's Matt singing live. I've been walking down Broadway Thinking about making new memories And everything in me Is falling into pavement cracks This stranger's hand that I'm holding I can't explain the connection All I know, all I know It feels like home I can carry the weight of the world on my shoulders But my heart has no protection the silence that we're sharing Feels like perfection So if you listen, you can feel it Feel my heartbeat in your head But this joy feels good In such a cynical man So raise a glass To the beautiful unknown Be prepared to undress your soul just me, but we're old friends. That's how life is, and how it should end. I don't mean no disrespect, but I did not hear one word you said. I'm sitting at the bar, looking in your eyes. Your heart is in my head. If only, if only you knew all the plans I've been making. I don't think you're coming crazy I'd kiss you right where you stand The lights go on, it's not polite But outside this bar, it's getting bright I'm gonna walk you home But I don't wanna let you go Courage from the Dutch, but not too much Yeah, we shared some stories I'm letting go of everything that hurt me before so raise a glass 
to the beautiful unknown and be prepared to undress your soul we just met but we're all friends yes our life is and hell we should let so raise a glass to the beautiful unknown be prepared Undress your soul We just met But we're old friends That's how life is And how it should end That's how life is And how it should end That's how life is And how it should end How it makes me horny. <laughs> Sausage. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys. If it doesn't work out, I'll be online next week looking for you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Cheers, man.